that day, I turned on the television, I saw the attacks, and knowing that there are only three units that do my MOS, 92 Mike Mortuary Affairs, we knew we were coming. So right there and then we said we need volunteers because you do not have to go if you don't want to. And right then and then, 85 soldiers stepped forward and said we're willing to go. I graduated 12th grade just three months ago, so it was like I was going to start college and then they asked for volunteers about well, what had happened, the tragedy and stuff. We didn't know where we were going. We didn't know what we were going to do, but we all decided that we needed to help. My wife was pregnant at the moment. She was uh, five days away from giving birth. But I, if I, I knew if my friends and um, fellow soldiers came down here, I was not going to be not, I was not going to be, you know, easy for me to stay back in Puerto Rico. So I just went on a volunteer, and I know my wife was going to be taken care of. As soon as we got mobilized here, our responsibility was uh, basically getting all the soldiers and different ships to work down in the North Parking area. That was originally the first mission that we have when we got here, and. Uh, uh, plus the responsibilities here at Garrison once we finished with the, uh, with the mission. After that was the uh, mission at the Pentagon, the uh, recovery of personal effects of the deceased. I was like, oh my God, all this. We're going to be able to, to do all this. I just put on my suit, my mask and everything. So let's see what happened. Once we got there and they told us we were gonna go through the rubble looking for personal effects, looking for documents, looking for body parts, you know, then it hit us, you know. The people that had never been to anything like this that we didn't go to the Gulf War or nothing. And we actually got to that rubble, that's where it hit us, you know. Going through the rubble knowing that you might find a finger or just some flesh, anything, anything that you could just to identify someone. You know, we still didn't know how many people had vanished from. We only had a few numbers, but we didn't know for sure. We were completely shattered, you know. It is not the same when you hear, oh, this happened in a certain place, as in when you go inside and you eyewitness those explicit images of human beings being slaughtered by these type of you know, evil doings, right? So at that time, I was strong, and I made my job that first day. I just bended my eyes, just like I believe many others, and did everything. Our shift was off, I came to my room, and I had to cry. The first day that we, we entered the, uh, the North Parking area and we started going to the rubble, I, I got suited up and I went in with them just to kind of have a feeling it was the first time for me and I want to make sure what was the feeling among the soldiers so I was there with them and I was doing the job with them and I, but I was trying to look around and see how the soldiers reacted uh, for the first time when they, they, they first found the, the first uh, portion uh, I remember the soldier brought it up to the center and we all look at him. No, nobody told anything. We just silenced. And uh, just stood there. And then I said, well, good job. Turn it in. And let's keep going. And in a Persian Gulf, we deal a lot of with uh, enemies. Here, we know that they are our people, our own people. And the emotion between one and the other is very different. When we knew that we were going to take out some remains from the Pentagon, bring out some remains, um, it gets to you because you start going back and saying, well, I saw it first and now I'm going to see it again. So your mind starts traveling back and you have to just try to set your mind to it, and that's what we did. That's what I did. Seeing it on television, like everybody says, it looks like a movie. It, it doesn't get personal, it doesn't get to you. I mean, some people, it will get to you, but not to me at first, you know. 
But once you are actually in there and you are going through the rubble and you are looking for something, well, it's, it's hard because you know some, a lot of lives were lost. And once you picked up, the first day I got there, like 15 minutes into the rubble, I found a finger, you know, and I had never worked with body parts before, real body parts. So it was kind of hard looking at the finger knowing it belonged to somebody, somebody I didn't know. And through the rest of the days, we found a whole bunch of uh, stuff, you know, and it was a hard feeling knowing that so many lives were lost there. I guess uh, uh, maybe when uh, I picked up with the wallet, I think it was, and then I picked up a coin, things like that, you know. They belong to somebody. Sometimes uh, the people around you, you know, they would have like different emotions and it's hard to deal with them because as an NCO you have to be strong. You look at them, they seem right to you but something's going on. You know, there's no people that are strong. I am because I have been through it but I can't tell who is who's not by just looking at them. You just, you thought a lot. You thought a lot about the people, at least I did. I thought about a lot about the people that, that banished there, you know, and afterwards when they had the ceremony where they show some of the faces and all of the names, being at the Pentagon before and going through their stuff and seeing their name up on that wall, you know, that's when it really got to you. That's when it really made you think, you know, and it was kind of tough. Remember guys, treat these guys, these deceased persons, like they were your own family. The way you wanted your family members, if they were inside the Pentagon, be treated. And remember that everybody will be grateful for the job you're doing. And you have made history, and you was trained for it, and do it to the best of your abilities. And I wish that, I, that all of them could know, all the families could know the detail and, and the uh, and the amount of work and the effort that they put not only to recover the remains or the portions, but also the personal effects that is as, as more important for the families. Since the rubble pile has finished, it has everything has, is done with the Pentagon. We've been working with the personal effects, sending the, the things that we found to the family members, to the people that are still alive. And like today, we just were giving them to the people, and they were so happy to find their stuff. And they're like, oh my goodness, I didn't think that this was going to happen, that I was going to see this again. And I mean, I was there today, and you, you see people coming in together, personal stuff, and they're so happy. Some of them, they're saying, oh, it's like Christmas. We're opening packages here. You know, they're, they're very happy. Thanking us, you know, you guys do a great job. So that makes us feel good. Yeah. I just like to do what I have to do. If I got a job that I have to do, I just focus on that and I do my job as, as good as I can do it because that's my, my commitment to, uh, to the United States and I will do it at, um, how many times that I have to do it. And I think that like seeing my unit and how like they're, they're like a family that just helped me adapt and I think that that this, this tragedy just has helped me like grow fonder to them and trust them more, respect everything that the Army has taught me. So for me, this experience has been more than just an honor to be here, you know. Sometimes we say, God, I wish we were in Puerto Rico back. In my case, God, I wish I could see my parents. God, I would love to see my husband. But at the same time, I thank God that I had the opportunity to be here and support these people. You always think, what's your reason for living? And you know, I just wanted to help. And I'm so young and I just wanted to start my life off well, you know, helping, out, uh, helping others out. And I just imagine if it was my family and how horrible it would be. You know, 
we see everybody tell us, you know, you did a good job, and you did this, you did that, you did this, you did that. And we know we did a good job, but when you, when you go see the president and you get to meet him, and he mentions you on speeches and everything, you know, then you know, then you know you really did do a good job. Then you know that all the training you did, you, you went through, served you well, and you did it well. So whatever comes on from now on, we know we're going to be prepared. Anywhere we go, we know we are prepared for our job. Like I told you before, we was trained for this, but you never, you never be trained to do situation like this. No matter how much training you take, you never be trained for a situation like this. It's something that is emotional and it's hard to do it. But we take the we take that in consideration to make sure that everybody's satisfied with what we've been doing and with all the respect to the fellow soldiers and the civilians that uh, lost their life.